Hey, um, this is Sarah, Damon's class, and I am going to play a game that I played when I was a kid uh, called Return of the Phantom. Uh, it came out in 1993. It was developed by and published by Microprose, which does not exist anymore. Um, they did Rex Nibular, which a lot of people are familiar with, and Dragon Sphere. Um, yeah, I actually played this game as a kid. It scared the crap out of me. I thought it was very scary. Um, but let's watch the intro and see what's going on. This is the CD version of the game, which has voice acting, uh, which I believe is the one that I played. Pretty sure. They're very <laughs> authentically French with these credits, um, which I think is really cute. There's a lot of really nice touches in this game. Um, that I think can be overlooked because of how, frankly, kind of boring the game is. Um, but as you can see, I think the art is honestly really pretty. I was impressed with that uh, when I was little as well. It was probably one of my very first adventure games, at least adventure games that weren't for kids. Like, you know, Museum Madness and things like that I definitely played, but this is my first kind of adult adventure game. Um, which I think is why it scared me, because I didn't really know what to expect. I really thought that death was around every corner, which, um, spoilers, you can't really die in this game. I think there's one scene where you can die. Um, but as you can see, people are getting ready to go see the 1881 score of Don Juan Triumphant, which is famously written by one Phantom of the Opera. Suspicious shadow. I'm sure, it's nothing to worry about. <laughs> I think they put a lot of love into making these backgrounds very accurate. I can only assume I've never <laughs> been lucky enough to go to Paris, so I don't know what this theater looks like in real life, but um, they definitely went all the way with the details. <laughs> Is it supposedly written by Eric? Um, can't prove that it was written by the real deal OG Phantom. about to happen. Or was it? They're really selling the chandelier part of this, in case you didn't notice. Cardboard cutout cow, though. <coughs> About to see this actress's finest moment. <laughs> Not meant to be funny, but maybe a little bit meant to be funny. I 
I always love that intro, just the mask just busting through with an evil laugh. It's very good. <laughs> so we're just gonna start the game. Um, I am doing post commentary if that's not obvious. Uh, this game is pretty slow, uh, so I thought it might help because, you know. Ah, Monsieur Montand, there you are. Step down here, please. I wish to speak with you. You'll notice in this game, um, it's much like a lot of other adventure games, there are different uh, things you can do. You can look and take and push, pull open. Um, you can actually look at quite a bit of things in this game, and I think they did a good job of making this game almost educational. Um, you learn a lot about theater if you want to sit and look at all the different parts of the stage, things like that. It definitely explains all that to you, and it's... I don't know, I think it's interesting. So let's figure out As what manager happened. of the opera, I just wanted to thank you, monsieur. We were so fortunate that you were attending the premiere tonight. Without your assistance in caring for the victims and dealing with the ensuing chaos, the situation would have been much worse. It's very convenient that you, uh, a detective, <laughs> was here I during a crime. I thank you for crime. all you have done, Raoul. It is not every detective with the surete who is also a patron of the opera. I do hope you will continue to investigate this horrible tragedy. I'm afraid we have only just begun. You can see below that we have a couple different options. Um, you can play Raul a bit mean or a bit nice, uh, depending on who you're talking to. I always go the nice route. I mean, that's every game I play, but I think he's a he's a gentleman. So no need to thank me, Monsieur Bree. Clark Gable looking, <laughs> Raul. Nonsense! You acted admirably and valiantly. I hope you will continue to do so when I tell you what I have to say. You know, as good as the art is in this what game, do you mean? a lot of the character faces, Only, like his eyes are so beady and he very creepy. Stopped. Who knows when he might strike again? Tell me everything you know about this. There are a lot of lunatics in Paris. <laughs> I firmly believe that I feel like you should talk nicer about your city. Oh, it's just full of crazies. A million murders. Are you sure Who you knows? have no suspects at the opera? I trust my staff implicitly. Our stage manager has confirmed that all employees were at their positions when the crime occurred. I have sent everyone home. I suppose you could return to the theater tomorrow should you wish to question anyone who is not here now. What do you mean by... I know I'm a detective and I'm into opera, but can you explain to me, oh, and explain to the player, this <laughs> why this is a copycat crime? This is the same crime committed by the Phantom of the Opera in 1881. Someone is trying to make us think that the Phantom has returned. Tell me more about the Phantom. The Phantom. His name was Eric. He lived below the opera while the thing was being built. He caused a lot of havoc because he was in love with an ingenue named Christine Day. Some I also don't think that's how you pronounce her last century, name. So it does he have, have a between 1881 and accent. 1900. I don't think it's Day, but... Christine Day? Gonna go Any relation me. to tonight's star? You mean Christine Flora? I feel like this is a weird no, question. They have the same so. first name, but that... What I don't know why you would about? assume they're related based on first name, but... His yeah. mask. The original score to his opera, Don Juan Triumphant, and a wedding ring. Supposedly the one he originally gave to Christine Day. She returned it to him before she disappeared with her lover, the Vicomte de Chonet. His name was Raoul too, by the way. Interesting. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty apparent. How were these artifacts <laughs> found? The current ingenue is the same name as... was performed as in the catacombs around the turn of the century. The Phantoms. The lover role is the same found. name as Christine's lover. Was so. discovered within, along with the artifacts. It, it is believed that this was the body of Eric, but nobody has ever really proved it. Where are these artifacts now? We have kept them on display in the opera library for years. Please feel free to go see them. I remember when I first played this, I thought that included his like actual skeleton. It was just on display, but it's it's not. Which is a total bummer. Which also would make it, you know, if they still have the skeleton, I'm sure they could do forensics on it. And maybe figure it out, but I don't know. Where can I find Charles? 
You should be able to find him in the stage left wing at his post. How do I get around the theater? With your feet, Go east into the orchestra pit and then into the trap room. That should lead you backstage. Charles can direct you from there. What do you want me to do then, monsieur? Your job? Do your job. I would like you to explore the theater. <laughs> Talk to people you see. Find out where this madman is hiding. Good lord, man. There Good were people lord. murdered tonight. So the voice acting this game goes from okay to bad. Uh, you'll see Please, at the end of this episode as a um, how bad it can get. But this guy, this guy and Raul are alright. I shall be in my office shortly. Come find it's not me the best and delivery, but then I'll terrible. give you further instruction. Good luck. Later, Steve. Until later, Monsieur Boy. Boy. I shall see you soon, Raul. It's always fun to put that little mask on everybody. So we can look at the chandelier. It looks like a dead animal. To Raul, anyway. And you know, you can use things that you're not supposed to, like to try and pull the chandelier. It'll tell you that you can't. Um, you can talk to the chandelier. Which has kind of a funny response. So we'll just head over, try and find the stage manager, just so he can tell us that he's pretty sure no one that works here did it. Um, but yeah, you can look at a lot of things in this game. You can look at music stands, learn that music stands have been relatively unchanged for a hundred years. You can look at the folding chairs, and assume that everyone's butt hurts while sitting on them during a long opera. But there's really nothing else to do here at all, so peace out. There's probably other a couple other things to look at, but since this is a video game, I do have to check a trash can. Never, never leave a trash can untouched. But there's a hole up here, so let's go uh, see what we can see on the stage. And you'll see that this game could have ended right here, if not for plot reasons, I guess. So we're all, he just sits here watching someone dressed as a phantom pitter-patter across the stage, make a goofy pose. He doesn't see him. Looks everywhere but behind him. Just, just out. See ya. But uh, I don't believe I tried the door down here but it is locked so we're gonna have to find another way to get up on the stage. There's a almost hard to miss lever uh, that we need to pull so. Explains what a trapdoor is, in case you weren't sure. This lever looks like it performs a mechanical function, much like any lever. I also think the sound effects in this game are quite funny, like the phantom's footsteps and the wheels that squeak on this thing. Sounds like an alarm clock going off. So we'll just head up here and use our detective muscles and just hoist ourselves up. <laughs> We're just gonna head over to stage left and find Charles. I don't know if we... now we did learn his name was Charles. Check him out. 
find out that he looks very busy, so it's the perfect time to bother him. And like I said, you can look at different parts of the stage and learn about that the proscenium arch is the frame of the stage. Yes, what is it? Again with the beady eyes. Are you Charles? Yes, I am Charles. He has a bit of a Donald Trump sniffing Please, problem. Tell me about your job here at the theater. I assume that's because he's supposed to be snooty. But... I am the stage manager. Since you obviously do not know what that is, I shall tell you. Quite literally, the stage manager Maybe runs the show. Assume that I don't know, but ended and the most people opened. that play this game might not. Know. A show I didn't at the time. To the director only until opening night, at which time I am in charge. Hello, nice. Please continue describing your job. <laughs> Please From tell my me more. The station here, I stay in constant communication with virtually everyone in the theater. I make sure the show runs smoothly and without a hitch. I follow the script as it goes and call all of the sounds. So really, this guy is just here to explain and to us that he is the eyes and ears of this whole situation. He didn't see anything weird. Everybody was where they were supposed to be. There were no phantoms, sort of even though we clearly problems. saw a phantom, like, I right sure there, where he would have seen it, but one thing. maybe you were I take hallucinating. Care of personality mm -hmm. clashes between stars. I make sure everyone is happy. Please tell me a little about the Opera House. I don't know why Charles so humors him. He just reads the whole Charles like Wikipedia Garnier for the Opera House. First commission during the reign of Emperor Napoleon III. Construction began in 1854 with demolition of the already existing buildings on the site. And it wasn't until 1861 that the first foundation stone was laid. The opera did not officially open until 1875. He could say goodbye Go on, for now, please. but I don't this think history we is fascinating. The work was I think we could still go talk to people we talk to, but should ask war. him about uh, Napoleon III some of the people that work here and after the he's of Paris took done giving us his thesis on the opera was the opera taken house. over by the communards as an arsenal and warehouse and military prison. <laughs> A prison? A prison? Many prisoners were incarcerated and tortured deep in the catacombs below the opera. By 1872, the communards were defeated and the new government was installed. Three years later, the opera house was completed and staged its first performance. It's honestly a pretty short Tell turnaround going from prison to opera house three years. The water level on the site was bad. There is a lake deep beneath the stage area. It's now basically a sewer. Ever since the commune was in control and the area was used as a prison, there seems to be a perpetual chill that no amount of modern electric lighting is able to dispel. Some folks believe the area down there to be haunted. Naturally. Kind of catacombs without there being ghosts. How do I get down there? <laughs> Rolls immediately like, show you me can't. the door. It was I want sealed to off see long it. ago. If there is a way down there, then it's through some secret passage we don't know about. Secret passage, eh? Very that couldn't possibly exist. How big is this building? God, why do you want like the square footage? It covers like, nearly three do you acres. Need to know? It is 17 <laughs> Again, high, game is seven of which half educational. Level. The stage itself is 175 feet wide. This guy's got all this memorized. Deep. Electric lighting replaced the auditorium gasoliers in 1881. It is a magnificent building. Beautiful. Anyway, after that whole monologue, I guess way, I'll tell I you who I am. Raoul Montand with the Surete. Uh, but he doesn't really care. What of it? Let's actually talk about relevant things. Can you tell me anything about tonight's mishap? Like the med is. Everyone was in the appropriate positions. There was no one in the fly loft or catwalks. All the lighting is controlled from the booth. I cannot imagine how it could have happened. <laughs> How was the chandelier attached? There is an alcove in the ceiling through which the chandelier's electrical wires and harness are rigged. 
You must go to the fly loft and traverse the catwalks above the ceiling to get there. It's actually the a pretty cool picture. Um, I'll try and put it in if I can. For of, uh, people working on the chandelier. So Do that's you have all any accurate. suspects regarding tonight's mishap? Well, I don't, but some of the ballet girls certainly do. I think the other word for ballet girls is ballerinas, but What do you mean? The ballet girls know something? They believe it's the opera ghost, you see. One ballerina in particular is spreading rumors. She just loves ghost stories. Can't get enough opera of them. Ghost. Do you mean the phantom of the opera? Yes, isn't it silly? They are saying it's the phantom's ghost returned to seek revenge on those who did him wrong a hundred years ago. Sniff exclamation point. Have you seen a man with a cape recently? And by recently, I mean like no, 30 seconds ago. No, I have not seen anyone ago. since everyone went home an of hour course ago. Not. Who is this ballerina? Can I speak with her? Her name is Julie Geary. I believe she is still here, probably in her dressing room. I have not seen her leave tonight. Some of the cast stay all hours at the theater. It's probably pretty close Where to real Mademoiselle life. Where is Mademoiselle Geary's dressing room? I imagine a lot of if you theater go through people the stage right door sleep backstage, at the theater. You will find a staircase <laughs> I don't know, it just seems rooms. like it's something that happens. Who else might Who be else here? Who else might be here? Any ghosts? As soon as I Phantoms, finish what martyrs? I'm doing, I'm going home. You might find Christine Florent in her dressing room. She is so dedicated to her art that she never leaves. She lives here. Goodbye for now. She hasn't seen the light and of day you, in sir. 20 years. You're welcome. Now I can finish writing down these sound cues so I can get out of here and go home. Goodbye, sir. Guys, real focused on his work, but I feel like you probably have the time. Like, I, th I think that you probably have work off tomorrow? <laughs> Just a guess. This is the sweet backstage area. There's this cool statue. Someone. Um, walk all the way back here. Watch him get smaller and smaller. I actually uh, go through this door by accident. I did miss something, so uh, it'll give me some time to talk a little bit more about the game. And like I said, it came out in 1993. It was pretty well received. Um, looking it up, uh, I didn't realize that the it was criticized for slow movement speed. Um, he does walk very slow, as you can see in these steps. It's awful, and uh, it says the game is offering only 12 to 18 hours of gaming for the average player. I can tell you that the game is not that long. Um, it doesn't really have any kind of complicated puzzles, so I'm not sure where they get that number from. Um, but anyway, we're gonna slip over here and pick up our first item. You can get a lot of items in this game, but not all of them do anything. A lot of them are red herrings that you pick up and never use. Not sure why that is. Um, but it was criticized for being short. Uh, and because it was $70, which today would be like $120, uh, which is really crazy to think about games at that price back then. Because um, most of us were kids, we didn't buy our own games. So <laughs> thinking that my parents spent that much money on this game is interesting. Um, but in this game was written by... Raymond Benson, who might be familiar. Um, it was also designed, so it was designed and written by Raymond Benson, who would later go on to write uh, the James Bond novels, uh, at least some of them. And he also uh, wrote a little game and designed a little game called Dark Seed 2 in 1995. Uh, and that might feel surprising because the game doesn't really look very dark seedy. 
Uh, there are, are parts at the end that very much uh, reflect that, but not for a long time. So it's kind of a bummer. But we're gonna go up here to a dressing room of Christine Florent, and uh, you will experience the other end of the spectrum of voice acting in this game. Um, we can take a look around. We'll assume that this is the star's dressing room because of the large amount of roses, which I don't know. Not a guaranteed thing, but we have this really cool fire axe, but we can't take it. We can try, but Raul is a man of morals and would not take a fire axe if it wasn't an emergency. So we're just gonna, excuse me, barge in to Christine's room. She won't mind. Her door's open. You can take a look at a couple things. Um, there's a little note over here in her dressing gown. And, you know, it's an adventure game. We can go pick it up. But again, Raul is a man of morals. And he doesn't have permission to take that. Uh, we also look in the mirror to check ourselves out, but nothing. It's really interesting there. Um, I'm gonna take a look at Christine, and we are struck speechless by her beauty. She's a beautiful young woman. Let's, uh, let's talk to Christine. Bonjour, who are you? We can kind of flirt with her a little bit, but I try and go the straight route, uh, at least for now. Just our name and title. Bonjour, I am Raoul Monton of the Surete. I am Christine Florent. I'm glad you are here. Please sit down. Her voice kills me. Her voice and delivery together. Why are you glad I am here? Because I believe I am in danger. I've been afraid to mention it to anyone until tonight. Why do you think you are in danger? It's somehow connected with the chandelier falling tonight. What do you mean by until tonight. So she didn't feel really compelled to tell sister. anybody about her, her ghost worries until people were murdered and a very nice gentleman came by to speak with her and can she, you tell me anything about the she will tell us falling? everything. Yes, I suppose I must speak up now. I've been afraid to mention anything until this happened. I believe it is all because of me that those poor people were killed. I also, why do you think I don't know it why it's interesting to me you? that they don't really talk about the amount of people that were killed. I assume it's like because 15 or something like that. I don't know, it's a pretty big chandelier. Revenge. But why me? But, um, I do yeah, not know. she thinks that the opera ghost is for sure after him. After her, I mean. The opera ghost? What do you know about him? Only that his name was Eric, and he was a talented composer and architect. Some say he possessed some black magic abilities, but who knows? You probably think I might be crazy, but I believe in him. He speaks to me in my dreams. Actually, it's the same dream, over and over. Tell me about your dreams. There is a mysterious man dressed formally in a cape he's standing in the this is your warning i'm gonna put it on the screen too uh this he next bit of dialogue has some sexual assault has a in it quality that i cannot just resist. to let y'all know i go don't to him but his face is in surprise you with it but it, it's a bit graphic what else happens in the dream he well he makes love to me at first, it is passionate and pleasurable, but then I always begin to feel trapped, and I struggle to get away. I reach up to move his face into the light, but he won't let me. What does he do then? My attempt to see him angers him, and he wraps a thin rope around my neck. He, he starts to strangle me. Just as I start to black out, I wake up. It's very frightening. 
What makes you think he's after you? So now we can uh, check out the note. Because I received a note from him. She got a real bona fide ghost note. What does the note say? That he is seeking his revenge on me for leaving him to die alone or something like that. I don't know what he means. Do you still have this note? <laughs> it's right there. Yes. If you want it, you can have it. It's there in my dressing gown. I'll take a look at that note, if you don't mind. I mean, she just said that Please you could. Please do. So go for it. Beware. I have returned to seek my revenge against you for leaving me to die in loneliness and solitude. Not even your lover can save you this time. The OG Phantom wrote that. Have you ever seen him when you're awake? Never. Only in the dream. But little Julie Geary has claimed to have seen him. She describes him just as he appears in the dream. Have you ever heard of Christine Day? Yes, I know the story of the Phantom. No one knows what happened to Christine Day and her lover, Raoul de Chagny. Supposedly, they disappeared together. So, of course, people them. have told her that she I, looks like Christine. I have heard they share the same name, her. same job. He asks if she's related. You're not related to her, are you? And, you know, I did make fun of this earlier, but of course she has Frankly, some roundabout reason why know. she might possibly my be related to her. My grandmother was orphaned, so I'm unsure of my lineage prior to her. There is only one curious clue. Which is... And what is that clue? That she was born in Scandinavia. And that was where Christine Day was from. And to where it is speculated that she and Raoul de Chagny So fled. yeah, it finds a way. <laughs> Adieu, so. Mademoiselle Florent. So I we've leave exhausted now. all conversation Wait, options. Monsieur. But Do she doesn't really please. want us to leave. She's understandably pretty upset. But we got to do our job. We got to go. So we have a chance to be I mean to her here again. But Raoul's nice. I see. But promise me that you will return, all right? I feel like we have known each other before. Somewhere. Dun, dun, dun. I promise I to promise. return. I'll come back. Merci, monsieur. I look forward to seeing you again. Adieu. So, that's all we can do in here. I'm gonna head out the door, if I can remember where it is. And uh, she mentioned Julie Geary, so next episode we're gonna go talk to her and see what she's seen, since she's apparently seen the ghost demon. Um, also, the store here is locked. That's the noise doors make when they're locked. <laughs> they vibrate. Alright, so next time we'll uh we'll continue our investigation.